Hey friends, my name is Mitch, and today we're going back to basics. So we start from scratch. What is my technique? Where did it come from? Why am I doing it? So step one was me wandering into art. And I think like everyone, I started out with the good old Prismacolor pencils. Um, and I had drawn regular paper not sure what brand of paper I was even using back then, but I saw Gemma Geiling's class on Craftsy. They had a sale in her class, and it was like 20 bucks. And in her class, what they would do is instead of using regular old paper for Prismacolor pencils, you'd use this, which is suede mat board. Now, suede mat board is a really interesting surface. It's a fuzzy paper. And her point was, and it's still valid today, it works great. If you don't have her class, I mean, go get it. It's, it's amazing for colored pencil. But her point was that it's a fuzzy surface and it's furry, sort of. So what you have are individual fibers sticking up out of the paper. Instead of just using a regular piece of notebook paper or some other type of paper, it has a fuzzy feel to it. And that makes for a free fur texture that you get when you do your colored pencils. So if you come here with your pencils and you draw something, it naturally looks furry. And that's because if you use colored pencil on it, some will go at the top of the fibers, some will go below the fibers, and you get a mixture and a sort of a blurry look. And that also applies to pastels, but I would not use pastels for quite some time. So I went and did a lot of colored pencil stuff. Like I made, um, well, that's the wrong picture. I made, let's see, this one in colored pencil. And that one took quite some time. Um, I think that one was 15, 16 hours. And it looks great, but 15, 16 hours is a long time to spend on an art project for me. I mean, I get bored around hour four, so I just did not have the patience. So I did this one as well. And again, you can see the light gray in the background. And then you have the individual hairs. Um, and then this one, this is Jack the dog. Um, and again, this one took at least 26 hours. And this one took almost 30 hours. So the problem that I ran into was that I, it just took too long. It was too much effort. I got bored of it and I figured there had to be a better way. So what I did was I just went and started trying to analyze what took so long. Um, and the problem is, is if you have two squares, yes, and you get a small pencil and you try to fill in the square, it just takes a long time. So the bottom line of what the problem was is doing individual hairs like this just took a long time. So what I needed was a bigger pencil, essentially, and that's what Pastel afforded me. So what Pastel did, the benefits of Pastel in this case, was to just go on and fill all this stuff in with what looked like really large hairs going in a certain direction, right? So you have this giant hair going in this direction rather than a single hair going in that direction. So your time spent went from 26 hours, 30 hours to three to four hours. And it looked sort of the same. The problem that you have is once you put it behind glass, right? Once you put it behind glass, once you back up to proper viewing distance, you can't really see small, intricate, little bitty hairs because most people's homes are not galleries. They don't have gallery type lighting. They don't have proper, um, most people use a dollar, two dollar, bulbs from Home Depot, they hang their stuff not at the perfect spot as far as lighting is concerned, and you can't see little individual hairs. So that's when I learned that you could sort of cheat at that point, right? So I'm still going to use a furry textured paper. However, um, what I wanted to do was um, use a cheaper paper than this. And the problem that you have with this is when I ordered it off Blick or Art Sites, it was very expensive. I mean, this is like five bucks for this. 
and little did I know you could go to your local framing shop and get it for one fifth that price. This is like a dollar at the frame. Next thing I tried was velour because velour was just less expensive. And you have two types of velour. And again, velour is the same. I mean, you almost see it's almost exactly the same. It's a furry surface. It's a furry surface. So you get the soft look at a less price. So this is velour paper. And you can get a big sheet of this for like six bucks. And best of all, on Blick in here in the America, it Oh, it's applicable towards coupons. So if they have a 35% coupon, 20% coupon, you can take it off of the paper and reduce it down to like four bucks for a giant sheet. So this is like a dollar, right? So you get a nice big surface to work on. This is velour paper. The downside, obviously, is thin. So it's thin, it bends up, things like that. A bonus though, you can hang it on your computer monitor and trace your dog, cat, lion, tiger, whatever on it. So I like the thin velour for that reason because you can trace. I don't like it because it's thin. Now, since it's a carpet, the other downside is you can't erase. So obviously if you spilled uh, chalk dust all over your carpet and you went over it, instead of going over with a vacuum, you went over it with some you know, power tool, you're gonna ruin the carpet fibers. And the same thing here, if you start getting an eraser and trying to erase off this thing, you're going to ruin, again, the carpet fibers. It's going to damage it. So if you make a mistake, there's two ways to fix it. One is take it outside, turn it upside down, and whack it, let the dust fall out, and put a new dust in it. And the second is to just get like a vacuum and just take it out or, again, put some other dust on top of it. So velour has a nice texture to it. It'll take multiple layers, so you just put another color in there. The second type of velour is a velour board. So this is essentially a thin board with this paper glued to it. So now, instead of a flimsy sheet of paper, you do have a nice board. And this also gets you to where you can take it outside and whack it and get all the dust to fall out, the extra dust to fall out. So, and it does get a little bit more archival. In other words, you're gonna be able to, you know, this is gonna last a little longer so the downside you can't hang this up on your computer monitor and trace from it but it's a little more expensive as well so this will cost you about um, for four of these cost you about nine bucks instead of the six bucks for this so each either one is fine the lure is going to be a lot cheaper than your suede mat board and suede mat board also has a bunch of other problems that I ran into with pastel and colored pencils, so I switch with, uh, so I stay with velour where I can. So now you're asking, like, what's the major difference, right? If I spent 26 hours on this, what's the difference between these two? I mean, you have a lion here in pastel, this is about four hours, and you have this, which is about 26 hours. So, I mean, at some point, which is better and which is worse? And in my view, I think they're both about the same. I can get this fur texture here, a little closer up. So I can get this fur texture here, on here, and it looks very similar. So if I can do this in one fifth the time, wouldn't you do this instead? And the answer is obviously yes. So that was the, origin of doing pastel on this. Now, I'm not saying that I'm an original person to do pastel with velour. There's a billion people that have done it for years and years and years. What I'm saying is, is I think that colored pencil on top of the pastel really makes it shine. So you don't just stop. There's three layers of what I do. The first is soft pastel. So we have the soft pastel smack it onto your velour. And the idea here is to cover as much ground as possible. So if you're doing a dog, so let's say you're doing a dog, a smooth dog with not a lot of hair texture. So let's say you're doing this dog. So you can do this dog in half the time that you can do this dog because this dog doesn't have a lot of detail, doesn't have a lot of hair. So now you can score big 
with soft pastels because you do soft pastels for the whole dog put a little hair texture here and there and you're done so you're done with this in like a couple of hours as opposed to something more complex with a lot of intricate hairs like that it's going to take about four hours so you can cut your time in half by using soft pastels and that's why we use soft pastels i know there's some other guys all they'll do is do the pastel pencils and i don't like doing only pastel pencils because again what about the bigger areas what about when i want to come in here and get a bigger area like a background what about when i want to get a bigger area here i don't want to sit there with a pencil and just do that all day it'd be like getting a small little detail brush and painting your house right it's just not something that i want to do it takes too long so soft pastel will get you there quick so a lot of people as well use harder pastel and i like harder pastel it's fine but i just think soft pastel gives a more even coverage to the face, to the body, and to all this other stuff than a harder pastel does. That's why I choose the soft pastel as a first layer. So layer number two is gonna be coming in with your Carbothello pastel pencils. And you don't need a ton of these. You just need, like this 24 set is more than enough to get you whatever you need to do. And that's with drawing grass strands with the pencils and stuff like that. So the three things you're gonna do with these pencils is you're going to come in and do small, small detail areas. The nose, the eyes, detail in the ears, and around the mouth. And if you're doing a tiger, you're going to do any little stripes with the pastel pencils. And the reason you do that is because there is small little details is hard to do in this small of a scale with these big pastels. If you're working huge, like if you're doing a full sheet, right? 40 inch by 32 inch, um, you know, sheet of a suede mat board or something like that, then you could probably get away with doing the big pastels and making the eyes. But something this small, you're gonna need a pencil. And I work about this small because I can get it done and again in two or three hours. So that's the goal here is to just pop it out. So the second part is going to be pencils, pastel pencils, not colored pencil just yet. And pastel pencils is going to get you your eye, your ear, your nose, mouth, stripes, any little detail on the body. Pastel pencil is going to be where it's at. And that's going to get you phase two, which is smaller details. So we start large and then we start honing in smaller and smaller detail until we get to the Prismacolor colored pencils. So here we have, let's say the lion, okay? So the lion, you can see I started out with big pastels, big pastels to cover this area, to cover that area, to cover these areas here, just get some color inside of here. Step two was to come back with the colored, or the Pastel pencils, do the eyes. Again, nose detail, mouth detail. Some of these hairs, some of these hairs up here with the pastel pencils. So the last step after you do both of those is to come back in with your Prismacolor pencils. So these are a wax-based pencil and the wax is going to, is going to sit on the surface above all of the pastel. So pastel is just dust, right? You go into your room, you spill dust onto your carpet, and you know, the dust is just gonna sit there. You can put more dust and more dust and that'll cover up the old dust. And it still is not sitting on the very top of the carpet unless you dump a gallon of dust. So the very top of the carpet, those fibers are still exposed, giving you the soft look, but what you can do is get wax and pour it all over the top of the fibers. And that's essentially what you're doing with the colored pencil. You're getting wax, you're going over your pastel dust and the wax will make a permanent surface that no more pastel can go on. In addition, the wax will make it shiny. So shiny works 
in certain areas, not everywhere. If you're going to have shiny everywhere, it's going to ruin your, your painting, your drawing. But shiny works in certain areas. Right here, shiny works in the little small little details of that. Up here for these dots, shiny works. It gives it a little reflectiveness because pastels aren't reflective, they're not bright, they're not shiny. So the wax gives you that shiny look. So that's, that's the purpose of the colored pencil. And since it's wax based, once you put wax on here, you're done. You can't put any more pastels. So that's a, the, the finale. The last step is gonna be your colored pencil. So again, first step, soft pastels. Get your base. That's what I call the base coats. You look at the videos, you have base coats. All I'm doing is putting color into here. And as a bonus, you can get probably half your painting done in 45 minutes with your base coats. I mean, that's, that's like half your painting. You just put the base coats on. And again, if you have a simple painting, if you have a simple dog like this, once you get the base coats on, you're, you're almost done. And I do actually have a couple of pets to where I did base coats and then I was effectively finished with the entire painting. Uh, let me find one. So this one, for example, this was, this little guy was almost all base coats. So you can see the whole body is nothing but base coat. I didn't do any detail at all. I just did base coats. The top of the head is just base coats. So you're talking 70% of the dog, is including the white, I did with base coats. Now the whole thing took me an hour and a half, probably like an hour and a half, two hours. So, I mean, that's a pretty good painting for an hour and a half and two hours. So again, the base coat stage, if you don't have a lot of individual hairs, you score big. I mean, you score 80% of your painting done in, a, in an hour. And then you can just relax and watch TV or go about your day or whatever. You're not going to be in a situation to where you're going to sit there for 26 hours. I don't think anybody wants to sit there for 26 hours. That's just a long time. I don't know. I get bored. I mean, somebody would probably enjoy it, but I just get bored. I get bored after hour four because I just want to move on to another project and finish this one already. So, so that's the benefit. I mean, if you look at the colored pencil, you compare it with this. I think that mine stands out enough to where the technique stands out enough to where it's it's going to compare it's going to be comparative i mean if you look at it proper viewing distance it's going to be comparative if you get your nose about an inch from it get yourself a foot from this thing yeah it's going to look totally beautiful in the colored pencil and not so much in the pastel and that's just nature of the beast but nobody, I mean, that, that's not the proper viewing distance. The proper viewing distance is to put it behind a frame, which is going to obscure a lot of the detail. Number one, the glass. Number two, you're going to get three to six feet away, which is going to hide a lot of the little individual hairs. So, I mean, I don't know. If, if you can't see it from three to six feet behind glass, why do it, right? Why do it? I mean, there, there's probably a piece to where... I'm going to carry it around and I'm going to say here and somebody's going to hold it like right up to their face. That's going to be a colored pencil project, right? So, but for just an average person, going to frame something, put it up in their house, um, pastel is going to be sufficient. And again, the colored pencil, you don't, you don't use a lot of it. You just use a little fringe of colored pencil here and there. What you don't want to do is overdo colored pencil and have it everywhere, right? You don't want to, if you're going to do that, you might as well just go full colored pencil. So that's sort of a history of how this got started, um, why I'm using soft pastel, pastel pencil stage two, and then the final one is going to be colored pencil. That's sort of a history of why I do that and what I think the advantages of it are and the disadvantages. Again, if you're going to carry something around and somebody's going to hold it to their face, probably want to go with colored pencil and just make it smaller, make a smaller project, like maybe this big, which is not gonna take you 26 hours, right? Or, but if you're gonna, just for the average person, average consumer, this is gonna be sufficient. So it's just a three-step pro process, and it's just what I do to produce a realistic pad in a short period of time. And this also is a nice boon to, let's say, your social media. You can post it on that. 
you know, you pop something out in a, in a few hours. If you have a gift that you need for your uncle, your aunt, your daughter, mom, whatever, and they have a favorite pet, you can paint their pet in a couple of hours, you know, and then go about your day. And then now you have their pet, you can go get a frame, put it in a frame, give it to them for whatever holiday, and they'll be all excited. So, I mean, it gives you the ability to crank out good work quickly so you can have um, anything from a sellable product to uh, a nice gift. So that's just my, just my take on, on painting and drawing in general. And um, if you're interested in that, let's move on to an actual drawing.